Good evening, everyone. This is Mike Romali here with the Hurricane Season 2020 update, part of the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion for September 5th, 2020, recorded around 7.10 p.m. Eastern Time. Let's take a look out here across the tropical Atlantic. There's a couple of things to discuss this evening. First of all, the remnants now, finally, the remnants of what was a tropical storm, but is now a remnant circulation Omar has officially degenerated into an open trough of low pressure. It's no longer a tropical cyclone. And this, again, is going to continue to pose no harm to land. Basically, just moving out into the open Atlantic may actually impact, uh, get caught up here in the easternlies and maybe impact portions of the United Kingdom and Ireland as an extra tropical cyclone. But the tropical characteristics are now ceased. Now, across the rest of the tropical Atlantic, we do have this curious area of disturbed weather, which is highlighted by the National Hurricane Center, only a 10% chance over the next five days. A big upper level low that's kind of parked right now over portions of the Bahamas, Turks and Caicos region, is producing vertical wind shear off towards the west of the system. So as this moves further west, this is going to encounter a more hostile environment for any tropical cyclone genesis and we will likely see uh, nothing really come off this but again you know it's that time of the year where we just have to watch everything so we'll be watching this but again strong upper level winds and a pretty unfavorable environment should await in the western caribbean but again this could bring some impacts to jamaica over the next couple of days in the form and fashion of heavy rainfall uh, certainly some gusty wind potential, but not really something of deep concern at this moment in time. Now, after this system, we turn our attention to what is likely to be two tropical cyclones, probably two tropical storms, uh, with the first one being Pauletta. Uh, that is likely to be invest area 92L very shortly within probably the next few days. We'll probably see 92L become tropical storm Pauletta. And again, this one is likely to be something that will be moving off towards the west-northwest, followed behind it by soon-to-be invest area at 93L, which is right now still over Africa. So these two systems are going to be the main headline over the next few days. Uh, of course, you know, this little wave will be something to watch, but the main headlines are going to be uh, 92 and soon to be 93L. And again, these are the ones that we're going to have to watch kind of going for, uh, forward with time. Now here at the Wide Atlantic sa uh, Satellite here, this is the infrared satellite loop since basically the sun is down across the eastern Atlantic right now. But you can see this upper level low that's just kind of spinning right now across the Bahamas and now approaching the Florida Straits and the South Florida region, this is going to be a rainfall producer for those areas kind of going forward in time, especially South Florida in through this week and, and an early part of next week, because this is going to park itself. It's not going to move fast. And this is just kind of going to sit over that area. But we are unlikely to see any significant tropical development in this area. And again, the strong upper level low uh, is producing vertical wind shear in the Caribbean and the southwestern Caribbean, which is going to prohibit any significant development of anything. And of course, you can see that, you know, this area has a very broad area of showers and not really a lot of thunderstorms anymore. But we can still see that there is some, and again, this big upper level low uh, carving out this wind shear pattern. So this is going to run into a pretty uh, unfavorable environment out in this region. Also, you notice that there is some dry air also around in the environment. Across the rest of the tropical Atlantic Basin, again, this is Invest Area 92L. It doesn't look that good right now, but this is the diurnal minimum pattern. And also, there is a lot of dry air off towards the north. And again, initially, this dry, stable air and the overall unfavorable pattern, at least, quote unquote right now is likely going to hinder much development and organization at least in the short term all of this dry air especially all this dry air towards the north it is you can kind of see it is just kind of sinking in this part of the environment at, in this part of the world right here so that is going to cause some delay but this could become a tropical cyclone 
by tomorrow or by Monday or Tuesday of next week. And you can see this other wave coming off of Africa, very convectively active right now, very strong tropical wave. Uh, not a lot of trade winds blowing across this area right now, especially at the lower latitudes. So this area is not really moving all that much. And obviously then you got 92L. Right now, I, I've, I've seen some people and you know gotten some fans that have certainly uh, raised their concerns about the Lesser Antilles being impacted, especially over there towards Puerto Rico. Uh, right now, this is no discernible, no, again, no discernible threat for Puerto Rico at this moment in time. Um, really, this is probably going to stay well towards the north of that region, even if it does move further off towards the west. Uh, coming off at a high latitude, it's really hard to get one of those systems that kind of moves west-southwest and then, you know, kind of comes like that. We're not likely to see that. So, now these tropical waves will be something to monitor coming off at a little bit of a lower latitude. But again, there is no discernible threat. There is no need to be worried or anything else. And really, this isn't much of a, a topic of concern right now. Now, with that being said... It, of course, you've got to monitor and just have preparations in place just in case if something does come your way. You still have a long ways to go in the hurricane season uh, with a little more than two months right now. But the general idea is that this is not going to impact Puerto Rico in terms of any major threats. So no threats there, no threats to the Lesser Antilles, no reason to be worried. Uh, you know, worrying does no good. So we, we don't want you to be worried. It, it just does no good in this case. But, you know, just have a preparation in place. But right now, there's no threat to the islands, no threat to Puerto Rico, no threat to the United States, no threat to the Bahamas, whatever. There is no threats to land at the moment in time. And speculating based on model guidance beyond the five or ten day realm right now doesn't do anyone any good. So don't speculate beyond five days what's going to happen. Go what what the Hurricane Center says five days out. You know, it's not really good to speculate beyond that point because a lot of things can change. If you can't take it within the context, you know, if it looks scary, don't look at it. That's, you know, obviously to a certain extent, you know. But by and large here, this is the 850 millibar chart. This is the uh, spin in the atmosphere about 5,000 feet off the ground. And the higher cyclonic spin here is in the reds and whites here. And again, right now you have 92L that's you know pretty loosely organized. Again, it, it, this is not bundling the energy very well. And this is actually the remnants here of Omar, which still has a pretty good uh, cyclonic vorticity spin to it right now. But again, is no longer a tropical cyclone. But again, you can see that 92L is still very disorganized. It's not really consolidated into much at the current moment. And thus, right now, there is not really that chance for this to significantly organize uh, into something massive, at least at the moment. Now, down the road, that could change. But right now, there is some things that 92L really has to work within for it to actually become a major hurricane whatever there is some strong vertical wind shear ahead of it and we can take a look at that here that right now we still have some deep vertical wind shear at about 20 to 25 knots across our storm right now so things are going to be hindered at least for the time being and you notice this caribbean system and does have an upper uh, upper level anti-cyclone over it uh, but this is not a very strong one by any means and since we don't have a very strong storm in this environment, this wind shear is going to easily kind of kill it off. You can see where that center of the uh, upper tropospheric trough, the uh, tut feature is right here across the Atlantic. Clearly right now across Cuba and the Bahamas and the Florida Straits. And of course that will be bringing impacts to Florida over the next few days. Um, but again, there's not really any significant threats right now. I, I did see someone saying that there was going to be a category five in, in, in Florida, you know, in the comment section of my earlier video. I want to quickly address that and say that's purely not going to happen right now. Um, the chances of that happening are, are just so slim to none at this point in time. Of course, you know, I didn't think it happened. You know, this is the hurricane season. We're at the peak of season right now. Uh, but to speculate again, two to four weeks out, just not something that's not going to really happen uh, right now. So I just want to address that by saying, 
you know, people who hype stuff up or whatever, you know, whether that's for hype or, or whatever, or just for the jokes, bottom line, that's unlikely to happen at the moment. We just don't have any sufficient evidence of that happening. So just want to say, you know, you know, just take everything with a grain of salt because right now there's still a lot of things that we don't know uh, about the upcoming pattern regarding 92L and soon to be 93. There's just a lot of things that we don't know about the overall pattern. So I just kind of want to make that very apparent. But again, there is still a lot of vertical wind shear out in this region. So 92L is certainly going to have something to, to, to kind of fight off uh, if it really wants to have a chance to become a fairly significant tropical cyclone again right now it doesn't seem like it's going to uh, be something of significant interest to uh, land but of course you know that can change uh, within any amount of time but again it's just a watch and wait game now the 18z gfs this is the gfs forecast the a50 vorticity the six hour valid as of eight o'clock this evening Again, this is kind of the very broad nature here with 92L, very broad nature here coming off of Africa. And you notice that it, it takes a little bit of time for these to actually organize. And the GFS finally kind of makes us a, a very, at least decent tropical cyclone, you know, by Tuesday. So it's kind of delaying Genesis here, delaying Genesis here. So you notice, and then we have a big ridge of high pressure out across this region. But you notice there is a pretty decent weakness here in, in the area, in the in the ridge. Now, this ridge is trying to establish itself here, um, but it's just not able to do so. And these move basically harmlessly out to sea. And again, you can see we're going to have a, a tut feature kind of hanging around here that might be able to shear whatever this is. This is probably 92L off. This might get carried on out. Again, it's just too hard to speculate right now. You do have a, a big ridge of high pressure out here, but you do also have a very sharp weakness in through here. So uh, again, you know, even the European forecast here, much of the same, you know, this generally gets carried on out. And then the subsequent waves basically just follow this on out to sea. So again, Right now, there's no land threats at all. There's nothing to be really worried about. Um, but this does bear watching because, again, we have seen in some of the ensemble runs that maybe this ridge is slightly stronger. Maybe this does get, you know, a little bit further west before coming out to sea or whatever. But the bottom line, if, of course, if you live in the Lesser Antilles, you know, Puerto Rico, the Bahamas, Florida, Gulf Coast, East Coast, whatever. Yes, of course, we need to be monitoring as this is the peak of hurricane season. We ask you to monitor anyway. But to be worried about something, to be all, you know, hysteric about it and panicking about it, that's not the right way to go about it. And we are not likely right now to see any significant land concerns from either of these. And that's very important, you know, as much as I want to give you good information and, and, you know, as much as I wish I knew where this is going to go down the road, we just don't know that at this point in time. And until there's a definitive land threat or a definitive solution out to sea, of course, it just bears watching, but it doesn't bear hyping at anything. It doesn't bear to stress or panic or worry about a situation that hasn't even taken place yet. Again, for reference, we don't even have a developed tropical cyclone yet, a hurricane, whatever. We don't have that. Until we have a common low pressure center with either of these, it's going to be hard to tell exactly where they're going to go because the models are just kind of guessing right now. They're just kind of guesstimating. We don't know that at this point in time. So I wanted to take a little bit of that time to kind of address some of the concerns because again, until we have a definitive low pressure center, until, you know, we get, you know, upper level reconnaissance out to kind of sample, you know, the environment around the storm, if they even do, which they probably will. But assuming that happens, assuming we even get 92L to become a powerful hurricane or whatever, you know, it, it just doesn't bear worrying about. Nothing bears worrying about. Again, just be prepared. But right now, if you live in Puerto Rico, the Lesser Antilles, Trinidad, Tobago, Grenada, Florida, the Gulf Coast, the East Coast, the Bahamas, Turks and Caicos, whatever, 
you don't have anything to worry about at this moment in time, okay? You have absolutely zilch to worry about, okay? But this does bear watching just in case if the pattern does change because I will emphasize caution, this is not explicitly 100% guaranteed out to sea and this is also not guaranteed to hit land. So there is a kind of a, a narrow window there, but you have to understand you cannot stress about these things because that is when you start to, uh, when you as a human start to lose the ability to make conscious decisions and your fears and worries take over just basic human science at this point. All right. So I just wanted to kind of clear the air with some of that, clear the room basically, but we will be watching things, of course. I'll be doing consistent updates as, as much as I have time for. And of course, I'll be doing blog discussions on my Patreon. The link will be down in the description below for that. Um, but again, I thank everyone for watching and your support. Every single one of you really means a lot to me. I greatly appreciate every one of you tuning in to watch these videos and all the subscribers that we have gained over the past several months. All right. With that being said, I hope you all have a great rest of your evening. And I will talk to you guys again tomorrow. Stay safe, everyone. Have a great night. I'll talk to you guys again tomorrow morning.